Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Downshift. My name is Orist, and today is one of those very exciting days because it feels like Christmas. And it does so because A, it's a very cold day in Canada, aka the toque and the sweater. But most importantly, boom, ECS has hooked us up with the front performance brake kit. Everything is here. ECS two-piece brake rotor. Take a look at this. Cross-drilled and slotted. This is so beautiful, I'm honestly so excited to put this on. Included in this kit, you have the EBC Yellow Stuff brake pads, as you can see right here. And finally, they even give you the brake sensor for the driver's side. So everything is here. I need to put this on the car because if you've been watching the channel, you know I've been pretty worn out for quite some time. Not to mention, the car is stage one tuned, so it's putting out about 400-ish horsepower. But on top of that, we have a track day coming up in about a week and a half where I'm gonna put the car through its paces. My brother's stage two BMW M2 is gonna be there. There's probably gonna be other M2 comps, M3s, cars like that. So this isn't only a beautiful upgrade that I wanted to do, this is 100% a necessity. Anyways, let's jack up the car and get to work. So as you can see, this is pretty faded already. It's got some ridges on it. The pad is pretty much toast. So it's really time to change them. All right, so the first order of business is going to be this sensor here. So I'm just gonna try to unravel it here. Okay, so that's out. There's another point right here where it's held. Okay, it's also out. Okay, so now the top part right here. Um, so you're just gonna pull this little guy off the wire is going to come off and finally it goes to this spot right here. You're just going to push that in with a uh, flathead or something, pull that out. And then the next steps after that is disconnected. You're going to pull this off, just pull out that way. And then it also goes over here. There's another place. Let's see if I can even do that right now. Might be a bit tight. Might need two hands. And then finally, there is another one right here. So this is gonna pull. Oh, okay. Came right off. Okay, so our three contact points are free. One, two, and three on the bottom here. The sensor is still connected. It's actually really easy. I can probably do it with one hand. Okay, just all you gotta do is slide this guy up. And that is it. So just remember this goes this way into the new sensor. And that is pretty much it. For the next step, there are two M10 triple square bolts that go here and here. It's a little tough reaching them and you need a stubby tool just like this. Luckily, ECS sent me this because I completely goofed. I had a longer one that didn't work. They sent me this right here. It's on their website. I'll link it in the description below. This tool is honestly a massive lifesaver. So go ahead and order this if you're doing this install. Okay guys, so I have the ratchet on right here. It's a little bit difficult to see. It's a little dark. You can see the bracket here that holds the brake lines and the sensor. So we're just gonna pull up. This tool makes it so much easier, honestly. This is a no-brainer. You will not be able to reach with something else. Just, just get it. And that is exactly what we are looking for. Okay, number two coming out. All right guys, so I'm at the back of the caliper. These are the two bolts that have to be removed. One right here and one up here and the caliper will slide off nicely. Okay, so for those two bolts, you're gonna need a 1316 wrench and preferably a big boy heavy duty one because you're gonna need all the leverage you can get and every ounce of strength that you have. Or you can also use a breaker bar such as this on a 1316 or 21 millimeter. My suggestion is get this on the back there and then hit it with a mallet. I'll show you exactly what I mean. And there you have it. All right, so that took a ton of effort, but now we have the caliper finally out. Put it on a bucket, uh, microfiber if you don't want to scratch it. So we're just going to pop out these pads here. Should be pretty easy, I believe. Let's see if it... Oh, wow, there you go. So comes right out. There we go. Going to put that down here and the other side is the same, and then we're gonna push these pistons back, put the new ones in, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. 
So I'm going to reuse this plate here, even though it looks a little bit cruddy. I'm just going to polish it up and clean it. Should be good as new. There are also some brackets here. I'm going to clean them up, but people usually do change them. This isn't a high mileage vehicle, so I'm not really worried about that. But let's look at the pads. Dude, these are fried. Holy cow, look at all the crap that's coming off them anyway. So this is pretty much toast. So I'm glad I'm getting new ones for the track day. And look at the difference. Wow, this is going to make a huge change with the driving. Look at all the crap coming off of this. I would actually highly recommend that you guys probably wear a mask and not just because it's COVID season, but because of all of this crap on here. Okay, so as we're doing that, let's go ahead and remove this so it can give us a little bit of room. So you're gonna wanna use a T30, that's a Torx that goes in here. I'm gonna hold it with my foot because I don't have anyone helping me. Okay, that was fairly easy. Move that. There you have it. We won't need this because we get a new one with the kit. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of wheel bolts back uh, because I have a feeling I'm going to have to hammer this disc off. It's probably seized. I mean, it's been on here for three or four years. So let, yeah, that, that thing is not coming off. I'm going to have to hit it with a mallet. All right, take a look at what we got here. All of this rust right here also. I'll try to clean some of that off before I put the new one on. Um, but now we at least have a lot more room to work here. So let's get this guy out of the way. Go away, buddy. So here's the plate that I just cleaned. Looks nice and new. This is the old one, so nice and cruddy. There we go. So let's look here. The pistons. These are out as you can see here. All you want to do is play with them and push them back in. You don't need a tool for this. Just keep pushing them all in, all the way back in. They pop out every once in a while, but the fluid gets pushed back because when you're going to put these pads back in, this has to be completely flush. So just remember that when you do this and that's on both sides. Alrighty, one pad is in. Took a bit of work to get that sensor through, but we're in. Now this guy has to go in metal plate facing the pistons. Let's see, hopefully we can get this on the first try. It's gonna be a bit of work. Maybe I can lay it down, might be easier. All right, it took a lot of work to get this one in, just the angle was wrong the whole time, and finally she's in. So now we're gonna put the disc on. Line it up like so, put your foot under, at least that's what I've been doing, just like that. Screw this guy in. I think that should be good. Look at that, eh? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Wow. Let's make sure we're good. Okay, that'll do it. Look at this, guys. Now this guy has to come on and uh, we're getting close to finishing. Alrighty, so we're gonna slide this guy on there. Make sure the housing is lined up there. The cables are free. The sensor is somewhere, somewhere here. Yeah, it's dangling. Now, what I'm gonna have to do is hold this with one hand and slide myself underneath because I need to see where the bolt threads. So let me just watch out. All right, I luckily got both bolts on. Now I'm using the ratchet. Top one is also on. How does it look? Looks really good, man, honestly. Yeah? I love the design of this. This just whole disc assembly and the red caliper too makes it pop. Beautiful, man. I think the biggest thing is just gonna be able to see like when you're driving the car, see how much more just aggressive and like clampy the brakes yeah, are. Yeah, more bite. Yeah, that's gonna be really nice. Yeah, as you can see, the back hasn't been done though, if you wanna show them that. The back of it? So the oh, rear, sorry, you yeah. didn't do the rears because yeah. they're brand new. Yeah, I mean, plus you also need all the braking force on the front, right? Yep. Yeah, but these are brand new discs, so there's probably no point changing them, but for someone like myself, the OCD will definitely be killing me every time I look at his car, but it's all right. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother him, that's all that matters. One quick thing, you guys are gonna notice the BMW shirt. However, this is trash now, because look at it. 
Oh my god. So, good thing we got the Audi. I gotta get an Audi he's, shirt next. He, he's doing the BMW guys just like a <laughs> massive disservice here. He used to be a BMW fan. He got the Audi and look at him. Now he's throwing out BMW uh, stuff all over the place. That's so. it, junk. Horrible. So as you can see, we are nearing completion. I have my torque bar there ready to get those uh, two bolts to 200 Newton meters. And then it's just those M10 triple squares and I'll fix the wiring in the back and that will be it. Oh, okay. okay guys, the final stage is here. I have put back everything in here. The sensor has been clipped in right there there hopefully you can see that it runs all the way down here I did skip putting it in here because it seems the cable is a little bit short but that's not a big deal because it's being held here and here and in the back so it's really not a big deal again guys huge shout out to ECS if you want these go to the website the link will be in the description below these look stunning but more importantly I'm going to give you my driving impression shortly after I put the wheel on things are biting damn okay first little drive here no noises no issues I'll give it a bit of gas and give it a little bit of brakes here oh that bite oh man this is what I'm talking about. Oh, that front just digs right down. Oh, this is so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yes. Once the fluid flush happens, too, this is going to be perfect. So it is now the next day. I wanted to have the night's worth of driving just to get a feel for them, and so far, so good. However, I still need to complete a brake fluid flush on this vehicle, and then we will be 100% ready for the track day. As many of you know, this S4 has had its horsepower increased, so to me, it's kind of a no-brainer that you would match that with stopping power. Some of you may say that the brakes are going to be eaten quicker by the cross-drilled and slotted rotors, but to me, safety is paramount. Why would you worry about money when you're modding it, doing all these things, and then you don't have good brakes? It kind of just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Give us a like if you've enjoyed. Consider subscribing because, again, there is much more content coming. We will see you in the next one. Take care.